The cancellation of the TSR-2 in 1965 left the RAF in a difficult position. The service had a need for both an intermediate to long-range bomber and a tactical strike aircraft to replace the venerable Kandra bomber. Initially, the F-111 was supposed to be both a bomber for the American Air Force and a naval variant was supposed to be used as a carrier-borne fleet air defense fighter. It was virtually impossible for one aircraft to perform both missions properly. And after millions of dollars of cost overruns and years of delay, the naval variant was dropped. The British government could not wait for the F-111 to be finished, nor could it afford it. The RAF was still without a replacement to the Canberra. The U.S. Air Force F-111 would enter service in 1967 and was soon deployed to Southeast Asia and combat in the Vietnam War. But the F-111 had been designed as a fighter in the Cold War when the United States thought it would be facing the Soviets in Europe, not guerrilla forces in Southeast Asia. The F-111 had breaking in problems and several were lost. The plane was withdrawn temporarily from combat. The design of the F-111 with the variable swept wing made it a very difficult plane to develop. The concept had been around since 1911 and in World War II, German, American and British engineers looked at the idea, but it was not until after the war did technology begin to make the concept possible. British engineer Barnes Wallace, famous for developing the bouncing bomb of dam buster fame, was instrumental in developing the swept wing design. Still, by the late 1960s, the British simply could not afford a vast research and development program. The TSR-2 program, even though canceled, had kept key portions of the British aerospace establishment going. The Anglo-French supersonic transport Concorde was under development. The engine technology began with the British V bomber force, the Victor, Valiant and Vulcan, which helped get the TSR-2 off the ground and would now help Concorde. The RAF had to turn to two venerable aircraft of the 1960s. The British built Blackburn Buccaneer tactical strike aircraft developed for the carriers of the Royal Navy, and the American McDonnell Douglas F-4 Phantom fighter bomber. The Phantom had earned its wings in many years of combat over Vietnam. It was particularly important for the United States Marine Corps, whose air units used it very effectively as a tactical strike close air support bomber. It could also defend itself in air-to-air -air encounters with enemy aircraft. The Phantom served in the RAF from the late 1960s until 1992. The Buccaneer had been designed to attack Soviet battle fleets at sea with nuclear weapons if necessary. It would serve throughout the Cold War as a credible deterrent. Its specifications were impressive. Its wingspan was 44 feet. The wing area more than 514 square feet. It was 63 feet long, and it rose 16 feet off the ground. Its empty weight was some 30,000 pounds, and its maximum loaded weight was 62,000 pounds. It could fly at a maximum speed of 620 miles per hour with a service ceiling of 40,000 feet. Its typical range was some 2,300 miles. The RAF was initially hesitant to take on a naval aircraft but it had very little choice with the cancellation of the TSR-2. The RAF Buccaneer variant entered service in 1969. Its solid performance earned the respect of the Air Force. While designed for the Navy, it actually saw longer service in the RAF, as the last conventional British carrier was withdrawn from service in 1978. The naval Buccaneers now literally had no place to land and they were withdrawn from naval service. For most of its long service, the Buccaneers saw no combat, except for a handful of Buccaneers in the South African Air Force. 
It got its chance under British colors in the first Gulf War to show it was a true warbird. It was used very effectively as an electronics warfare aircraft, designating targets for RAF tornadoes. It also had an opportunity to drop its own bombs. However effective the Buccaneer was in the Gulf, the airframe and design was aging, and the aircraft was retired by the mid-1990s. The tactical strike role became covered by the Harrier Force. Had the TSR-2 been built, it probably would still be in service today, most likely as a firing platform for cruise missiles and precision-guided bombs.